What up, everybody? Instructor Beans back again here with another dividing fraction lesson. Today we will be looking at dividing a unit fraction by a whole number using models. Let's take a look at our objective. Our objective today. Today I will be able to divide a unit fraction by a whole number by using an area model. All right. Thank you so much, Larry, for the introduction. Um, and so let's start with some math vocabulary. Okay. So what, what do we mean by a unit fraction? A unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is a one. So here we have a list of fractions, right? We have one half, one fifth, one sixth, one twelfth, one thousandth. All of these are unit fractions because the numerator is a one, right? It's one unit out of whatever the denominator is. Uh, four over one is not a unit fraction, right? The denominator isn't going to be a one. The numerator is going to be one, okay? Four, uh, four over one is really just four. And then here we have five tenths. And again, this is not a unit fraction, even though it could simplify to a unit fraction of one half. Right now it is not because the numerator is not a one. It's talking about more than one of the 10 pieces. And if you were with us for our last lesson on how to divide a whole number by unit fraction, this is gonna sound very familiar, but it's going to be important to listen to again. When we divide, we're answering one of these questions, right? We're either trying to figure out, okay, how many groups, so we have a total and we're trying to divide it. We're gonna figure out, okay, how many groups can I put this total into? Or we're trying to figure out, okay, how many are in each group? So let's take a look at a division equation to really understand this. So here we have 12 divided by four equals three. So if this was one of those division problems, which we would call a quotative division word problem, right, where we have a total, so let's say we have 12, and then we're putting four in each group, right, and then we're gonna try to figure out, okay, how many groups of four can I make from 12, right? And so obviously you probably know this because the answer's right there, um, but we could make three. Okay, so sometimes when we're dividing, we're trying to figure out, okay, how many groups can I make? That's why my question mark was with my groups. Okay, love that part whole model. Sometimes we're doing partitive division. And again, that's not really necessarily uh, important for you to know the name of that. You could just sound really smart. Um, and in this one, right, we know the groups and we're trying to figure out, okay, how many are in each group? So we know that there's four groups because we're doing 12 divided by four, right? One, two, three, four. In, in partitive division, we're trying to figure out, okay, how many is in each group? And of course, this question mark would have to be three because 12 divided by four would be three. So same math problem, but different type of word problem. These are the reasons we would divide if this was a word problem. It's gonna be very important that you understand that. So here we have an I do problem and we have Larry's friend up here to uh, give us some information that's gonna be important. Thank you, Larry's friend. So for this type of problem, when your fraction is your dividend and you're dividing it by a whole number, it makes it easier to think about if you think about this division as we are trying to figure out how many in each group, okay? So we know how many groups, we know that we're gonna be dividing one fifth into three groups and we're gonna be looking for how many are in each group. So first of all, I wanna draw a nice big area model that's gonna represent one whole, all right? And then I'm gonna split this into five equal groups and I'm gonna do it vertically, okay? You can do it horizontally, but I'm gonna do everything vertically today because um, I think we'll make it a little bit easier to understand. And again, fractions are equal groups, so although these aren't perfect, I did my best to make these equal groups, okay? And so I want to shade in one fifth, right? Because I'm gonna start with one fifth. I just split my cake into five pieces and I took this red piece, maybe it's red velvet cake, and I just cut it and put it on my plate. So we're starting with one fifth, and again, we're gonna split this into three set equal groups, okay? So if I split this one fifth into three equal groups, it would look like this. Now, here's what's important though, okay? Because it's a fraction, we need equal groups across the entire whole. So if I split this part into three, so if I split this one fifth into three equal groups, I have to split all of my fifth into three equal groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this line all the way down, okay? 
I'm going to go ahead and circle my three equal groups I just made right here. Okay, so here's one, right? Here would be two. You can, I mean, you can see it because I split it horizontally, right? And here would be the third, all right? And when I split that one-fifth into three equal groups, my question becomes, how many are in each group? Well, you can see I have one shaded piece in each group. So my numerator is going to be a one, right? Now, my denominator is still not a five though because I split these fifths into thirds going the other way. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15 total pieces that I split my hole into. So my denominator is now going to be 15. So when I took one fifth and I split it into three equal groups, I had one fifteenth in each of my three groups. So my answer to the problem, one fifth divided by three is 1 15th. Let's take a look and name the steps that I just did. All right, so our friend Shaki is back with our steps to divide a fraction by a whole number using an area model. Take it away, Shaki. Shaki kind of gets excited. He doesn't really uh, speak proper English when he gets excited about math. So let me go ahead and translate that for you, right? Step number one, we're going to draw an area model to represent our fraction vertically, right? I split, I split that five equal pieces vertically. It's important that you split it the same way each time. Step number two, we're going to use our whole number to see how many groups we are going to split that fraction into, okay? So I was dividing by three. My divisor was a three. So I split it into three equal groups. And then step number three, we're gonna count how many shaded pieces are in each group. Again, this is partitive division. That's what we're thinking about here. We're splitting it into the groups. And then our question mark, what we're trying to figure out is how many are in each group. So I had 1 15th shaded in each group. So my answer is 1 15th. Let's take these steps and apply them to another problem. All right, so here's a we do problem. Um, if you would stop and take a look in the description of this video, you would find a link to some guided notes that you can use. Um, and hopefully you are gonna be taking these notes with us so you can go back and refer to them when you have questions or need help. And that's how you become the best mathematician you can be. So again, Larry's friend is here to remind us we're thinking about division as how many in each group for these problems, right? So step number one, I'm gonna draw my one eighth nice and big okay draw my hole so this would be equal to one right it's like one dollar or one cake i'm gonna split it into eight pieces vertically i'm actually impressed how uh straight those lines came out all right and then again my numerator is one so i'm going to shade in one of those eights and it doesn't matter which one you shade in you could shade in any of them okay because at the end you're just going to be counting how many shaded pieces you have in each group um, but I always do the one furthest to the left. And that way in our next video, where you're learning how to do this with non-unit fractions, so maybe it's two eighths or three eighths or seven eighths, right? I always just like to shade in from the left to the right. So now my divisor is telling me that I want four equal groups, okay? So I'm gonna split this into four equal groups. And again, you do it the opposite way. So you're gonna do this horizontally, okay? So that's half. And if I split each half into half, that will make four equal groups, all right? And again, just to remind you, right, we're not just putting that one eighth into four pieces because because it's a fraction, it has to be equal groups. So we have to split the whole cake into four pieces or the whole Hershey bar, whatever you want to call it, right? So here is one of my four groups, all right? And you can see uh, the other four groups. If you kept going, you could see all four. And the question to how many uh, shaded pieces do I have in each of those groups? Well, my numerator is one, right? Because I only have one in each group. And now again, my denominator isn't four. It's not eight, okay? It's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this row, 16, 24, 32. So my denominator now is 32 pieces because that's how many total pieces my whole is split into. And so if I took one eighth and divided it into four equal groups, I would have one thirty second of a group in each. I would have one thirty second of my entire whole in each group. All right, let's take a look at this U-try problem. If you're new to Instructive Beats, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pause it in a second, 
try this one by yourself and then push play to check your mastery. If you're not there yet, if you're still confused, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Uh, you can just do this as another we do problem in your notes. So step number one, I'm going to start by drawing my one third. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my area model nice and big. There we go. My denominator is three. So I'm gonna go ahead and split it into uh, three equal groups or as equal as I can make them. And I'm going to shade in and maybe I'll even use a highlighter this time, make it a little bit more exciting. One of those pieces. How did I know one? Because my numerator was a one. So it tells me one of my three pieces. So again, now I want to split that one third into eight groups. And so just to kind of show you what you're really doing, you're splitting um, your one third into eight groups. But again, just like we uh, talked about before, right? Uh, fractions are equal groups. So if I split this one third into eight pieces, I have to split the other ones into eight pieces as well. And this is where I hope my lines can stay straight. All right, and again, the question you're asking is, how many shaded pieces do I have in each of my eight groups, right? So here's one of my eight groups, and you can see that I have one piece shaded in. So obviously that would be uh, my numerator is one. And if you count your pieces, you see you actually have 24 total pieces now that make up your whole. So your answer for one third divided into eight groups is there is one 24th in each each group. Hopefully that helped you out. Um, if you're ready for a challenge, you can check out our next video on dividing fractions by whole numbers. Uh, that one will be not just unit fractions, but all different types of fractions. So again, thank you so much for checking us out. We know there's lots of different options online. We appreciate you. We hope you will uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, let us know where you're watching from. And again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.